Hey everybody, welcome back to Mad Horse Barbecue. My name is Brian, and in today's video, we're gonna fire up the GMG Daniel Boom Prime Plus, uh, the one that I won uh, in that raffle. Pretty excited still about it, because winning stuff's cool, winning grills is even cooler. Uh, but we're gonna fire up GMG Prime Plus today, and we're gonna smoke up a meatloaf. Um, now this isn't your mom's meatloaf, this isn't your grandma's meatloaf, uh, unless, you know, you guys and girls are, aren't like me, because I grew up having, sorry grandma, but my grandma's meatloaf, and it was just, Meh. You know, she cooked it in a pan, it kind of cooked in the grease, and uh, you know, I never really got uh, excited for meatloaf. It reminds you know, meatloaf to me kind of always reminded me of uh, you know, of that scene from Christmas Story uh, where the little brother is always eating the meatloaf and meatloaf, beatloaf, I hate meatloaf, or however that goes. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, but anyways, that's what I remember meatloaf as growing up. Um, doing it out on the grill, uh, it's just a you know, just way you know, it, it's just really good. Um, you know, and I don't, I don't cook it in a pan, I want to cook it right on more or less like a disposable drying rack or a disposable tray. Uh, it's gonna get some smoke penetration through it. Uh, no ketchup in this meatloaf, it's gonna be barbecue sauce. Uh, and this thing is super, super, super simple to do. Uh, basically, if you got a meatloaf recipe that you enjoy, I highly suggest uh, you try it out on one of your, you know, one of your grills or smokers or whatever you got. Uh, pellets, I like the best for meatloaf just cause you know, we, I think ground beef takes on the smoke flavor pretty easily, uh, and the smoke flavor you get out of a pellet grill is pretty minimal compared to, you know, cooking over coal, uh, bench, and, you know, that's just my opinion. So enough blabber out here. Uh, it's about noon right now. Uh, I like getting the meatloaves ready early so I can let it sit in the fridge uh, for a while and kind of set up and let that rub kind of penetrate through that meat. So let's take you inside, and uh, I will show you exactly how I get my meatloaves uh, put together. So come on in. All right, guys, up in the kitchen, got some ingredients here in front of us. Uh, I kind of do meatloafs, kind of sort of the same, but maybe just a little different every time. I really don't have a written down recipe. Uh, I've just done these enough to know what I like and what I don't like. Uh, so we'll just go over it. Um, I'm starting with three pounds of 85, 15 ground chuck. This is fresh ground chuck, um, right from the butcher, or right from High V's, you know, meat counter, you know, same, same difference. Uh, too many packs of rice crackers. This is gonna get turned into breadcrumbs. Um, I, if I had breadcrumbs, I'd use them, but I have rice crackers, so I'll crumple those up and make them into some breadcrumbs or some rice cracker crumbs. Uh, we got two eggs. Uh, we got some W sauce here. W sauce is just going to be, you know, I'm just going to put it in there to taste. Uh, I'll probably do four or five, six dabs. Got a whole onion, whole green pepper. Got some garlic. Uh, we got some uh, blues hog, raspberry chipotle. Again, um, like I said, this isn't your mom's or grandma's meatloaf unless they use barbecue sauce. And, you know, if that's the case, you know, that's, that's pretty neat. Uh, and then uh, for seasoning, instead of using salt and pepper, I'm just going to go ahead and use my go-to rub here. You know, the Tailgater Barbecue Party Rub. I know it's going to be great in this meatloaf. So instead of the salt and pepper, I'm going to use Tailgaters. Um, so first things first, uh, one little secret I like to do is before I put the loaf together, I like to get the uh, the green pepper and the onion diced up. And I actually kind of like to, to fry it, just, pr you know, kind of sort of cook it uh, on the stovetop. Not all the way, but I like to cook it on the stovetop with some garlic. Uh, and with some barbecue sauce, and uh, I really think uh, it gives the veggies a nice flavor, and it kind of, it starts out the process of the meatloaf, and it puts flavor into the loaf before you really even cook it. Um, so let's go ahead and get these diced up, and get them on the stovetop. I really like using one of these vegetable dicers and you can see the size of the insert I got in there. Um, I do have a, a small insert, but for meatloafs, I do like the veggies to be a little bigger. So again, these things are super easy to use. Pretty much just take your green pepper, put it in, drop it. we do the same thing with the onion. So you got some nice uh, chopped onion and green pepper. So let's go ahead and get this on the stove top. All right, once I get the pan uh, nice and hot, uh, first thing I like to do before I put the veggies in, I'm just go ahead and take like a teaspoon of minced garlic. Gonna mix that in. We'll go ahead and take the veggies. are cooking away I'm gonna I am gonna go ahead and take a little bit of my seasoning uh, and, use, and just put it right on the veggies and then also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take some of the blues hog uh, raspberry chipotle and I'm gonna put that right in with this as well so 
this one like that. I'm only probably going to leave this on the stove top fry for about just a couple minutes. Um, and you can see I used a squeeze bottle, and the squeeze bottle is really nice, but the raspberry chipotle is kind of a little bit of a thicker sauce, and it's got some red pepper flake, and a lot of the times the red pepper flake kind of gets uh, clogged up in the, the nipple there, so um, a lot of the time I just take the cover off with the raspberry chipotle. All right, that's going to be good. All right, now get yourself a bowl. Um, I'd get the biggest bowl you got in your house unless you got a huge, gigantic bowl. But this is the biggest bowl I got in my house. Uh, I don't need one this big, but I'll tell you right now, there's nothing more annoying than uh, trying to mix some stuff together and then having a bowl that's big enough, but you gotta kind of be careful with, because if you're not, you'll just twist stuff up and you'll get to make a mess. But uh, the bigger bowl, the better for this. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and add the ground chuck to it first. Three pounds ground chuck. And I am loosely just gonna break this up, kind of. And to the ground chuck, we're going to do two tablespoons of the tailgated barbecue party rub. We'll go ahead and take our two egg, which two eggs which I've scrambled up. Go ahead and take our vegetable mix. This has been cooling for about ten minutes. Uh, the ground chuck is cold, so. Really I'm gonna get everything out of there, all that garlic and everything, because like I said, garlic really does make this meat look good, I think. And then we're just gonna start with, uh, sorry, and then we're gonna take uh, the W sauce. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I forgot, almost forgot that. And we're gonna do about one, two, three, four, three, two, three, that many of the W sauce. Uh, there is Worcestershire powder, there is W powder in the tailgater barbecue party rub, so we already got some of that incorporated in there with the veggies and now uh, and the meat. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and take one of the mini packs of Ritz crackers here. We're gonna start with one and then we're gonna mix it up. And then if I think it's a little loose still, uh, I'll put another one in there. But you always, like uh, like when I do these, I always start on the, the lighter side with the breadcrumbs. But now that we got all this stuff in there, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna mix this stuff up. Go ahead and add a little more rich cracker to it. I'm also going to take a little bit of the Blues Hog Raspberry Chipotle and put it right in with the meatloaf. About that much. Mix it up again. Just what you can see what I'm doing here is I'm kind of just pushing on it, kind of stiffing it up a little bit. Okay, that's going to be good for this step. All right, now instead of uh, cooking this in a pan or you know, putting this on a tray, then slide it off, which a lot of the times that's what I do is I just get like a flat cooking sheet. I'll put some oil on it. I'll make my loaf right on it, and I'll actually kind of just I'll tilt it uh, when I get out to the to, you know to the grill, and I'll just slide the meatloaf off of it, and it work it works fine. But I have like 50 of these things, and I'll put the link of these in the description. Uh, it's like a it's a disposable cooking rack, is what it is. But these things are uh, you know they're very flexible. You can bend them however you want, and as you can see, they are. Uh, you know, it, it will allow the smoke to go through it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this on the tray. And then uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just take some pan cooking spray. Give it a spray here. And this will make it at the end, cause I'll probably, I don't know if I'll try to get it off at the end, uh, but this will just make it so if I don't take it off at the end, the slice should come off and nothing should stick to it. Um, yeah, like because, you know, you don't want it to stick to it, obviously. And what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're just gonna get the loaf. We're going to put it right on here and shape it how I want it. Just pop it on and make a loaf. Again, you can make your loaf uh, whatever size you want. You know, you, heck, you can even, you know, you know what, what my dad does is he just presses it into the bottom of the bowl, lets it sit out in the freezer for like a half hour, then just turns the bowl upside down, and then uh, that's the shape of his loaf. I kind of try to get mine more of a football shape, but again, it eats the same way no matter how you form it pretty much. Uh, that's gonna be good. So the last step is uh, I may have lied right off the bat. I'm gonna use a different kind of rub But the last step we're gonna do is we're just gonna give the outside of this a coat of rub uh, First coat we're gonna go on with is the light coat of the tailgaters Just like that Then we're gonna go on with the uh, the blues hog sweet and savory And 
that should be good. So it'll, uh, what I'm going to do is it's about an hour before I'm going to throw this on. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this in the fridge and uh, it'll firm back up the, you know, in the fridge a little bit. And uh, it's going to sit in the fridge just like this till it's time to throw it on the Green Mountain Grill. So uh, when we're throwing it on the smoker, we'll pick back up. All right, now that the grill, got the meatloaf right here. GMG is heated up to 225. That's going to be our cooking time today is 225. Let's go ahead and throw this thing on. And another nice thing about using these racks is you can just pick it up and put it right on, and you don't have to handle that loaf. <laughs> Get it? I don't know. And that's not really a joke. But go ahead and close this thing down. Uh, I am going to temp probe this at some point in time. I'm just not going to do it yet just because <coughs> um, I don't really ever probe meatloafs right away. Um, you know, when it comes to it, I don't really, you know, a lot of stuff I don't probe anymore, but meatloaf I will. Um, but, you know, we'll probably check back in here in about an hour, hour and a half-ish, and then we'll uh, give you a peek at it, and then we'll throw a probe in it. So we'll see you in a little bit. All right, guys, we're back. Uh, been on for about an hour and a half. Internal temp right now is at uh, 133, almost 134, using my Thermalworks uh, Smoke X4 with that needle probe again. Big fan of needle probes. Again, I will leave links uh, to that in the description as well as everything else I use in this video, you know, as far as... Uh, you know, like the sauce and the rubs and stuff, I will also uh, leave a link of that in the description. Um, for those of you who want to know, uh, you can kind of see through that uh, viewing window there, but I'm using a combination of uh, Lumberjack 100% Oak and Lumberjack Char Hickory. Um, I really like the blend of those two together. I'm a big fan of Oak, big fan of Hickory, big fan of Charcoal, and I think the three uh, combined, or the two things combined, or there, are three, there are three elements, you know, Oak, Hickory, Charcoal, um, but they're two different kinds of pellets, and I think all of them combined make a really good thing. But, you know, we're at about 134. Take a peek at the loaf. Right there. See, I got the needle probe right through there. It isn't quite in the center. Uh, in center, I mean, it's not like quite like right in the thickest spot of loaf. I'm sure it's actually probably a little lower than 134. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and close this thing down. Once it hits about 145-ish, I'm going to start glazing this uh, with some uh, Blues Hog Raspberry Chipotle. Uh, so when I do that, uh, at least for the first glaze, I will pick back up. So we'll see in a little bit. All right, we're back. Uh, internal temp on a meatloaf is at about 150. Gonna go ahead and start glazing this. Um, got my sauce, trying not to burn myself right here on a little disposable tray. What I like doing with sauce, uh, it spreads a lot better uh, if you preheat the sauce up. And the sauce for using today, like I said, is the Blues Hog Raspberry Chipotle. So let's go ahead and give it a glaze. Raspberry Chipotle, you know, it's a thicker sauce in the uh, in the jug, but you know, and obviously, you know, it thins out pretty good when you loosen it up. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is, I'm probably about every 15, 20 minutes uh, until this is done, I'm going to come back out and give it another coat. But for now, there's the first coat of glaze, uh, looking pretty good. It's going to taste really good. So I'm going to go ahead and close this thing down. Internal temps at about 152. Got about 10 degrees yet before I'm going to pull it off. So uh, yeah, we'll probably pick back up uh, maybe one more time out here, and then. Uh, or we'll pick back up and we're placing into it. Like I said, I really never know. I don't really have a plan with these videos. I just kind of just kind of go with it. So we'll see you in a little bit. All right, we're back. But I'm for right about three hours. Take a peek at the loaf. I'm pretty sure it's done. The, uh, the Thermorx X4 is reading about 15, 20 degrees hotter. Probably because I had it probed wrong. Actually, I'll, I'll just go ahead and say I'll guarantee you it's because I had it probed wrong. Because that thing is pretty spot on uh, with the MK4 here. But I've uh, been on for three hours. I'm guessing it's probably about right about 160. So let's just go ahead and take an internal temp see what we got right here in the middle. Yeah, 158, 159. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I won't tell if you won't. We're not at 160, but we're at 159. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this thing off. Uh, I did get a probably a good three coats, maybe even four coats of that Blues Hog uh, Raspberry Chipotle on there, just about 10, 15 minutes apart. Uh, so it should be good and sticky, you know, make a good glaze on it. So we'll go ahead and pull this thing off, let it rest for just about maybe 5, 10 minutes, and then we'll pick back up and we're slicing into it. So we'll see you then. All right, guys, we're back. Uh, it's time to eat real quick over the cook times. Three hours, 225. Uh, internal temp, right about 159, 160-ish, depending on where you checked it. Um, you saw me in the last video check it with the uh, Thermoworks MK4. I get that right off the bat. This thing smells... Oh, it smells fantastic. Uh, I really do enjoy the smell of that Blues Hog Raspberry Chipotle. Um, and, you know, you can get that smoke smell right off that fellow grill, too. So, you know, without even trying it, I got really high hopes for it. I'm pretty sure it's going to be good just because I've done somewhat the same exact recipe before. So, uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and cut into this and see how we did. So, just because I got my big brisket slicer out here, I think I'll just go ahead and take a slice 
or just cut this thing right down the middle. This is one of the Dow Strong slicers. Um, no, they did not send it to me. I bought it myself. I will include the link of this knife in the description because I really do enjoy this knife. But let's go ahead and take a peek at the loaf. Oh man, that is a loaf. You can see it's just dripping on the countertop. Um, let's go ahead and cut into it. All right, sorry, let's go ahead and cut a slice. Right there, looking really, really, really good. Let's go ahead and try it. All right, here we go. Nice little piece of loaf right here. Got some people laughing in the background. I got a hungry kid, so let's go ahead and give it a try. Well, I, you know, right off the bat, I gotta say, just that faint taste of smoke you get from cooking stuff on a pellet grill is absolutely fantastic. Um, Tailgater's Barbecue Party rubbing this. I knew I'd like it, cause just cause I've done burgers a similar way to where you just put some burgers together and you don't flip them and they turn out really good. Tailgater's Barbecue Party rubbing this instead of your salt and pepper. That's yeah, just real nice. Uh, Blues Hog Raspberry Chipotle again. Um, it's a winner with the loaf. Um, so if you haven't followed my recipe, or if you have for some reason followed my recipe, uh, but you haven't tried sautéing the veggies up first in some, uh, you know, in some Blues Hog Raspberry Chipotle or just a barbecue sauce, highly encourage you to do that because when you do that and add a little bit of garlic, it just kind of infuses the meatloaf from within with just a ton of flavor and it's, it's, it's fantastic. So besides that, that's about all I got. Uh, I appreciate you guys and girls watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, make sure to give me a thumbs up, hit that notification bell because I'm a guy who likes to smoke meat, buy grills, and uh, drink bush light. So besides that, you guys and girls have a good night. See you next time.